She did not just vanish into thin air! Nexus slammed his hoof down on his desk and glared at the pair of guards that had entered his office. We're sorry, sir, but we can't find any trace of the prisoner, reported one of the guards. Did you search the town? Yes, sir. Well, search it again! She did not just vanish! The two guards saluted and quickly left the room. Nexus glared at them as they left before flopping down onto the cushion behind his desk. He rubbed his temples, but before he could gather himself, another guard came into the room. What do you want? Nexus asked, without even looking at the guard as he continued to try and massage away his growing headache. Queen Nightmare Moon wishes to speak with you. She's waiting in the throne room. Nexus's aggravation cooled to a simmer as he eyed the guard. Did she say why? She wanted to speak with you about Twilight Sparkle's escape. Instead of growing worried, Nexus allowed himself to smile a little. The queen was concerned that Twilight had escaped. It was a sign his efforts had brewn fruit. This was the equestrian queen that he had been expecting. She would undoubtedly be furious about Twilight's escape and demand she be captured. He was going to receive a brutal verbal lashing for letting her escape, but he'd accept it graciously if it meant the queen was finally acting like the way she was supposed to. Spell Nexus found the entrance to the throne room shut when he arrived with no guards sending watch. It was ominous, and it sent a pleasant shiver down his spine. The silence, the cold, the ever-present sensation of danger. This was how the castle should have felt since day one. This was the castle of Nightmare Moon. Not wishing to keep his queen waiting a moment longer, Nexus knocked on the door. The chamber beyond echoed with the sound. After the reverberations had faded, a familiar voice called out to him. Come in, spell Nexus. The door to the throne room swung open on their own accord, nudged by the magic that left no visible trail. This caused another shiver to crawl down Nexus's spine, but this time he was unable to enjoy it. He felt like an ant stepping into the presence of a god, and was beginning to fear what fate awaited him. Still, Nexus forced himself to enter the room, and he quickly crossed the hall and bowed at the base of the throne. Behind him, the doors swung shut, and he could sense the surge of magic. The room had been sealed. No pony would be able to enter or exit the room until the spell was lifted, and no pony would be able to hear what was said inside. It was just him and the queen, and that fact fueled his growing fear in Nexus's chest. Nightmare Moon was sitting on her throne, and her royal seat had been turned to face the towering stained glass windows. The windows depicting her flying through the sky, basking in the light of a full moon while ponies below cowered and fled in fear. They were, in his opinion, the perfect decorations for the queen's throne room. Unable to stand the silence prevailing the room, Spell Nexus forced down the tight knot in his throat. You summoned me, your highness. It had taken every ounce of willpower. The Nightmare Moon kept herself from attacking Spell Nexus outright. On the flight back, her anger had come to a boil. She was ready to do her worst to him, punish him for what he almost did to Twilight. She had every intention of making him pay. But as she imagined and planned what she would do to Nexus, other nagging thoughts entered her mind. The first was what Twilight would think. Nexus deserved to be punished severely, maybe even made to face his own noose. But what would Twilight think if she did that to Nexus? How disappointed would Twilight be to see her take another pony's life in rage? From the first thought of mercy sprung others, and they choked Nightmare Moon's anger like a weed. It also brought on a single chilling realization, a realization that cooled her anger just enough. When she arrived at the castle, she did not seek out and attack Nexus as she had originally intended. Instead, she had waited in her throne room for him to arrive, to provide the answers she sought. As she waited, Nightmare Moon sat on her throne and stared at the stained glass windows. The image they depicted of her soaring over Equestria and inspiring fear was exactly how she was depicted in old legends, exactly how most ponies thought of her. It was an image Nightmare Moon had grown to despise. She hated those windows. She hated all the windows, murals, and statues that decorated her castle. The only purpose they served was to be a constant reminder of what and who she was supposed to be. She heard a knock at the door, and beckoned Nexus in. She heard him walk across the hall and listen to every hooffall. She then waited, 
waited for him to be the first to speak, if only to allow herself a few more moments to ensure that, when she turned around and saw Spell Nexus, she would not attack. You summoned me, your highness? Nexus asked with a bow. Yes, Spell Nexus, I did, Nightmare Min said coolly. I wanted to ask you a few questions. Of course, your majesty. Anything you want to know, I will gladly answer for you, Nexus said with the utmost respect. Have you found Twilight Sparkle? No, Nexus answered with a shake of his head. She's eluded our search for the time being, but she will be found. Nightmare Moon shifted in her throne and glanced over her shoulder. Did you order her execution because she attacked me? Yes, your highness. Such a crime cannot go unpunished. Nightmare Moon slowly rose from her throne and stepped around the regal seat so that she could look directly at Nexus. You mentioned once before that Celestia asked you to study the shreds of my body, and it was while interacting with those shreds that your eyes were opened to the truth, to the good I could do for Equestria. Nexus smiled and slowly rose, standing up straight in front of his queen. Yes, my liege. It was the greatest day of my own life. Nightmare Moon moved forward and came to a stop in front of Nexus, her tall stature dwarfing his, just as a mountain dwarfed a hill. Would you have, before that day, ever considered going against Celestia? Nexus blinked a few times as an expression of confusion formed on his face. I don't see how that matters. I answer the questions, Nexus. Nightmare Moon hissed, her words dripping with hostility. I... I suppose I wouldn't have, Nexus admitted, struggling to control the tremor in his voice. Nightmare Moon continued glaring at Nexus, casting her shadow down upon him. Did you have any affection for Celestia before you were blessed? I... I might have, Nexus said as he took an anxious step back. In my foolishness. Nightmare Moon did not allow Nexus to move away. For each step he took in retreat, she advanced a step for her own. What exactly was your relationship with Celestia? Nexus struggled to force down the knot that formed in his throat. I was the headmaster at her school, and, and at times I had served as her advisor. Anything else? I... I was once, uh, a long time ago, her. Nexus had to pause and struggled with his own words. I was her private student. She took me on as her personal pupil shortly after I had entered and earned my cutie mark when I created my very first spell. Nightmare Moon stood silent for a moment. Her eyes were narrowed to slits, and her icy glare threatened to bore a hole straight into Nexus's soul. One... Final question. How close were you to Celestia when you were her student? I... I was just a foolish child, your highness. Nexus tried to protest, his voice crackling from fear. I, I didn't know any better, or that she... How close were you to Celestia? Nightmare Moon repeated bending her head down so that her demanding, piercing eyes were even with Nexus's terrified glaze. I... <clears throat> I once thought of her as... as... as a second mother. Nexus shut his eyes tight and winced as if admitting such a thing was not only painful, but also an invitation for him to be punished physically. Nightmare Moon, however, turned her back on him and looked back to the stained glass window. She said nothing though a deep frown formed on her lips as she squeezed her eyes shut. My queen, please, forgive me, Nexus begged. He bowed as low as he could and practically kissed the floor as he spoke. I was ignorant and foolish before. It is why I am so blessed now. Your blessing allowed me to see what an utter and weak fool Celestia was. Your gift opened my eyes to the truth. Or blinded you... Nightmare Moon whispered so quietly, Nexus was unable to properly understand what she'd said. Before Nexus could ask what she had muttered, 
Night Raven turned to face him once more, this time with a kinder expression. Spell Nexus, would you like to receive a greater blessing from me? Would you be willing to receive a gift even more precious than any you've ever earned before from me? Uh, of course, my queen, Nexus answered, looking as if he was on the verge of tears. It, it would be my eternal honor to receive a gift from you, no matter how small. Nightmare Moon's mane flared, and she stood tall before Nexus. Then prepare yourself. Nexus nodded took a seat before his queen and puffed out his chest in pride. He waited eagerly for the blessing he was about to receive, and he closed his eyes to try and hide the joyful tears streaming down his face. All the while, Nightmare Moon's mate slowly encircled him like the cool embrace of a morning fog. And before Nexus realized what was going on, Nightmare Moon had put him to sleep just as she had subdued the guards at Canterlot Palace. She laid him down on the floor gently, and spoke just above a whisper, I shall now grant you the greatest gift I could possibly give you. I will return to you your freedom. With those whispered words, Nightmare Moon let her mane flow out into Spellnix's body and phase through his flesh. She began to search for what she knew was already there, a parasitic blessing of magic. It was the only explanation that made sense to her after hearing how much Spell Nexus once cared for Princess Celestia. The enchantment Nightmare Moon found was more advanced than she could ever have imagined. Every fiber of Nexus's being was choked with the so-called blessing. The foreign magic was everywhere, like a thick network of roots in fertile soil, and the magic was pulsing with a steady, reliable rhythm, like a heartbeat. Just like with Twilight, Nightmare Moon found the core of the infection in Nexus's head, though she quickly discovered the infection's core had overtaken Nexus's entire brain. Where in Twilight, it was more like a cancerous growth in the back of her skull. Despite being more advanced, the infection felt the same to Nightmare Moon, so she tried to do as she did before. She used her magical mane to try and pull the roots to remove the blessing from Nexus's body. Yet when her maid made contact with the infection, it attacked. It shocked her like when it zapped her with lightning, and for a moment it filled her mind with strange thoughts. The sadness and suddenness of the attack made Nightmare Moon pull her mane back, and she quickly distanced herself from Nexus in fear that he had been the one to attack her. Yet, even as he began to sit up, Nexus's movements were sluggish and sloppy, as if he were sleepwalking. Nightmare Moon watched as Nexus sat straight up. He rolled his head back and allowed his mouth to open in a silent scream. For a moment, it looked as if Nexus was breathing. But then he coughed and something began to spill out of his mouth. It was a ghastly black smoke that looked sickly and poisonous. Which each breath Nexus took, more the smoke escaped his mouth. The vapors began to circle and wrap around him, while the larger cloud formed above his head. The cloud continued to grow and drift towards Nightmare Moon. Given a few more seconds, the cloud would have likely reached her. Yet before it drew close enough, Nexus choked as if something had suddenly grabbed hold of his throat. At the same time, the spirals of his horn began to glow with a weak but steady white light. That light spread from his horn to the rest of his body, covering almost every inch of his coat. When it had dissipated, Nexus's body was painted with a glowing etrich swirls which seemed to originate from his cutie mark. Chains of magic then appeared from that glowing design. They lunged out, somehow grabbing hold of the black cloud, they wrapped around it and dug in, binding the smoke before snapping taut and pulling the cloud back into the air above Nexus's head. Nightmare Moon anxiously fluttered her wings in an effort to relieve the uneasy feeling that was gripping her. There was something about the cloud that made the hairs on the back of her neck stand up, yet at the same time she felt drawn to it. Taking an anxious step, Nightmare Moon walked around Nexus, keeping her distance until she stood just to his left side. She focused on the white, etrich patterns that had appeared across his body. It was a spell of some sort, there was no doubt about that, but it was not a spell she had seen before. Nightmare Moon began tracing the arcane lines with her eyes, trying to see if there was any rhyme or reason to where they were laid out. She came across a few books in the library about geometric magic, ones she had searched for when she had heard of her resurrection spell had relied heavily upon the ancient form of sorcery. 
yet focusing solely on the white lines proved to be a mistake. As Nightmare Moon tried to find meaning in the spell that had appeared across Nexus's coat, the cloud was inching its way closer to her. It approached her slowly from the side. The mystical chains pulled taut. When Nightmare Moon finally noticed how close the cloud had become, it was already too late. Striking with the speed of the snake, the cloud lashed out, surging through the hole in the chains. Nightmare Moon wasn't able to jump fast enough, and the cloud pressed against the side of her body. From that one moment of contact, Nightmare Moon felt as if a sea of emotion was pouring into her. Hatred, loathing, a thirst for revenge and power. These and many others began to fill her chest. It felt like she was being overwhelmed, washed away and drowned, like she had fallen into a raging river. In that moment, however, the white swirls on Nexus's coat pulsed, and the chains wrapped around the cloud rattled. The spell holding this cloud began to pull, and slowly but surely it dragged the vaporous mass away from Nightmare Moon, breaking the connection that had been formed between the two. The instant the connection was broken, Nightmare Moon found she was able to move and breathe again, and within moments her mind was in a panic. She stumbled back to put as much distance between her and the cloud as possible, and panted heavily as she tried to comprehend the overwhelming emotions that were already dying in her chest. It was just as Nightmare Moon had feared. Rifling through her memories, she thought back to the conversations she shared with Spell Nexus, remembering details he had offered. He had been chosen by Celestia to study the shreds that were left behind when she, or rather she and Luna, were defeated by the elements of harmony. Nexus said that while he was working on these shreds, he received his very first blessing that his eyes were open to her wisdom and glory. But if anything, he had been blinded. He had been twisted and turned into a tool by a will that wasn't his own, much like how Nexus had used the poisonous magic to turn Twilight against her. Spell Nexus was the mastermind behind the Children of Nightmare, but it was not his will that drove him forward. He was just another victim, the first victim, and the true evil behind the Children of Nightmare, behind all that had happened in Equestria. There was none of the Nightmare Moon herself. The Black Cloud. Nightmare Moon could only guess it was once a shred left behind by the elements of Harmony. It was a part of her. Arguably the worst part. Her unmatched loathing of the Royal Sisters. Her arrogant sense of superiority. And her thirst for vengeance. The echoes of her most powerful emotions. The emotions that had once made Nightmare Moon seek the Eternal Night. Had attacked, entered, and corrupted Spell Nexus. It was those emotions that drove Nexus to turn against Celestia, to form the Children of Nightmare, and to attempt the Resurrection Spell. If that was the case, why hadn't the poisoned magic tried to rejoin with the rest of the shreds when the spell was cast? Why hadn't it left Nexus and merged with her? That was when Nightmare Moon realized the purpose of the white geometric designs that crisscrossed Nexus's body. It was a binding spell, meant to hold a majority of the tainted magic. Nexus was the headmaster of Celestia's school, and the previous student of the princess. He wasn't an idiot, and he must have known that dealing with the shreds would be dangerous. Nightmare Moon could only guess that he'd prepared a binding spell, either before he began working with the shreds or after he realized he'd been attacked. Nexus, the real spell Nexus, had turned his body into a living prison, even if it meant that the corruption was free to twist his mind. If the binding spell was not perfect... He was able to spread his blessing by releasing small pieces of the corruption inside of him. It was a bitter truth, and Nightmare Moon still wished to punish the pony who had almost killed Twilight. She, however, could not deny Nexus's innocence. He was just another victim. He was just another pony she had hurt. And she was not, had to try to set things right. Lightning crackled around Nightmare Moon's horn, and the energy quickly spread to her mane. She would attack that poisonous magic outright and destroy it. She would rid the world of it. She would destroy the thing that had dared to threaten the ponies she cared about. She would destroy the worst part of herself. That thought, that one thought, echoed in Nightmare Moon's mind, like a haunting call as it stirred something deep inside of her. She hesitated, and just stood idly by, while the black cloud continued to reach out towards her, even as this binding spell on Nexus's body would pull it back. The cloud was a part of her, the worst part of her, but it was still a part of her. Without even thinking, Nightmare Moon took an anxious step forward, now understanding why she was drawn to the cloud. 
It was her vengeance, pride, and loathing. It was the thing that would let her become the merciless ruler that every pony expected. It let her become the whole mare again. It was the part of her that would actually enjoy being Equestria's tyrant queen. The cloud was just inches away now, and Nightmare Moon came to a stop when she saw it try to close the minuscule distance that kept the two separated. She shut her eyes and tried to fight the temptation building in her mind. If she joined with this, she would be able to forget about it all. Forget about her friends, about Twilight. She could simply forget about the time she had spent as a filly. Nightmare Moon opened her eyes, and a predatory smile spread to her lips. Yes. She would be able to forget, and then she would be able to take her revenge. She would make the bearers of the Elms of Harmony pay for what they had done. She would smash the ancient power as she had become before, and led those who had wielded it against her to their just rewards. A tight-fitting rope and a long fall from the gallows. She would watch them plummet down until the noose tightened around their thin little necks. She would watch them all fall. She would watch Twilight fall, twist in the wind, and receive her due punishment for abandoning Equestria's true queen. She would do it all, and then she would. Fresh glowing chains lashed out from Nexus's body, digging deep into the cloud. The binding spell was struggling to pull the smoke back as it spread out across Nightmare Moon's body. It began to blend in with her coat and merge with her flesh, until one of the magical chains grazed Nightmare Moon's chest. The magic burnt like a hot stove, and the pain snapped Nightmare Moon back to reality. She realized what she was thinking, and jumped back to separate herself from the black cloud. She panted heavily and fought the urge to vomit. She had just wanted to hurt the ponies of Equestria. She had wanted to bring back the Eternal Night, to deprive the ponies of their son. She had wanted to destroy the Elms of Harmony, and she had wanted... wanted to see Twilight hanging from the gallows. A flutter of movement in the periphery of her vision drew Nightmare Moon's attention, and she saw the cloud inching towards her once again. This time, however, she retreated from its reach while her eyes and mane flared. No! She snapped at the cloud. I do not want you! I do not care if you are some piece of me! I don't- Nightmare Moon's words died on her lips, as she was hit with a cloud of realization that some pony had thrown a brick in her face. Her breathing became slow, and tears formed in her eyes. She began to laugh and cry at the same time, <laughs> laughing at how stupid she had been, and crying at what she had lost. In the part I've been missing, Nightmare Moon echoed, half-heartedly stomping the ground, venting frustration from her own idiocy. Without you, I am not the same mare I used to be. Without you, I could have gone on being ignorant, continued being a silly, scared filly. I could have just stayed Nix. That thought sparked something inside Nightmare Moon, like a match being tossed to a powder keg. It ignited with rage, a rage like none she had ever felt before. Her gaze quickly hardened, focusing on the black cloud with an unmatched hatred. And you, you took that away from me! Nightmare Moon bellowed. You couldn't be satisfied. You couldn't take defeat. You had to corrupt innocent ponies and finish the resurrection spell. You had to make me remember everything that I've done and convince me to do things I could never be forgiven for. And because of that now, they all hate me! I can never be happy again because of you! The surge of anger in Nightmare Moon's voice seemed to give strength to the cloud. The dark magic swirled into a frenzy and strained against the clouds and the chains that had bound it to Nexus. As Nightmare Moon calmed herself from the outburst, so did the cloud, yet it continued to reach out for her. But no more. Nightmare Moon seethed as her eyes hardened with cold determination and tears streamed down her face. In that moment, the cloud of smoke changed. It no longer reached for Nightmare Moon. Instead, it was trying to distance itself from her. It was trying to flee despite the fact that it was still being restrained by the binding spell. Nightmare Moon spread her stance, and her eyes began to glow white with magical power. The gentle waving of her mane grew more violent, and the magical field of stars rose upward like a roaring fire. Her mane stretched out and began to pull against the ceiling, like the night when she had first come back to Equestria, when her mane filled with the air outside of Ponyville Town Hall. I won't be the mare you want me to be, Nightmare Moon spoke, punctuating each sentence with a crack of lightning. 
It arced down and struck the black cloud, causing it to vaporize and burn away. The cloud surged and swirled in a panic, struggling with greater force against the binding spell like a caged animal. I won't let you hurt the ponies I care about anymore. I won't let you hurt Rarity, or Rainbow Dash, or Applejack, or Fluttershy, or Pinkie Pie, or Cheerily. With each name, Nightmare Moon brought down a crack of arcane lightning from the dreadful storm her mane and tail had formed in the air of her throne room. With each strike, part of the cloud was eradicated, the dark vapor scrambling and rolling, like it could feel the pain of being struck by the force of the focused magical energy. I won't let you hurt Apple Bloom, or Scootaloo, or Sweetie Belle, or Twist! I won't let you hurt my friends ever again! The next bolt of Nightmare Moon called down was the strongest than the ones before, her rage giving strength to her spell. It blew a significantly larger hole in the cloud, but unlike the bolts before, Nightmare Moon also felt the lightning strike her as well. It was like she had been stabbed in the chest with a dagger, and the searing pain made her grit her teeth. Despite the fact that it was still trapped inside Spell Nexus, Nightmare Moon still shared the link with the cloud. It was a part of her, and her base instinct of self-preservation were screaming at her to stop. A fresh wave of nausea passed through her, and her body felt like it was on the verge of giving out. Her own body was rebelling, trying to keep her from further destroying the cloud, but Nightmare Moon would not stop. Keeping herself on her hooves through sheer willpower, she continued, I won't let you hurt any pony ever again! This time, when Nightmare Moon shocked the cloud, it audibly hissed in pain, its form writhing in the air like a bag of wounded snakes. It was hurting, but it was a pain she did not hear or see, but felt herself. Her eyes were tight shut. Her ears rang with the sound of her own screaming. It felt as if she'd attacked herself. A burning, searing, stabbing pain shot deep into her body. She was forced to drop to one knee, if only to keep herself from falling over completely. She panted, and the glow in her eyes faded as she tried to recover. It was a moment the cloud, which was half as large as it had been, tried to seize. It squirmed and strained against the chains and the binding spell in a desperate attempt to escape, and it was beginning to succeed. The lines on Nexus's body were fading. The binding spell was losing power. Freedom, however, would come too late for the cloud. Rising back off of her front knee, Nightmare Moon steadied herself as the glow in her eyes returned brighter than ever. The thunderous storm formed by her mane began to crackle with energy, and became so saturated to the point where it couldn't hold any more magic even if it could try. Nightmare Moon focused that energy, and with a single final stomp she screamed her final words to the poisonous magic. I WON'T LET YOU HURT TWILIGHT EVER AGAIN! The surge of lightning that was released at that moment was like nothing seen before in Equestria. The thunder blew out the throne room's stained glass windows, and cascaded across the land. The sound felt like an earthquake in Ponyville, and was clearly audible, even in distant Appaloosa. The bolt of arcane energy itself was as thick as a tree trunk, and shone like the miniature sun. The throne room was completely bathed in light, and any pony who happened to be looking in the throne room's windows was blinded for a few seconds by the bright glare. The thunderous sound drowned out Nightmare Moon's scream. Even though she couldn't hear herself, she knew that the sound coming from her mouth was blood-curdling. The pain. It was like nothing she had ever experienced before. It was worse than she had been attacked by the elements of harmony. She felt like she was being burned and stabbed to death from the inside out. To Nightmare Moon, it felt like the pain of the spell went on for an eternity. It was, however, only a few seconds before the spell was spent. The arcane lightning slimmed and faded before completely disappearing, leaving only a few lingering arcs of energy to cascade across the room. With the spell ending, Nightmare Moon collapsed into a trembling, panting mass on the floor. Her body tried to recover from the pain, and her vision swam. She didn't know how long she lay there, but as soon as she had the strength, Nightmare Moon raised herself off the floor. She looked across the throne room. Spell Nexus had been blown clear by the thunderous explosion, and now lay unconscious against the far wall. The glowing white lines on his body looked broken and jagged, and were now starting to fade. The binding spell had been broken but it had served its purpose. The dark cloud was gone, but Nightmare Moon could see something remained of the poisonous magic. It was like a pathetic little blob of black gunk that oozed and gurgled. It was no longer or larger than a field mouse, and it rolled like a sickly, sick, sticky ball of tar. 
It was inching its way towards the throne room door, still trying to flee. Sneering and grunting, Nightmare Moon forced herself back to her hooves. Her legs were shaking, but her, she kept her balance, enough to walk forward. It only took a few steps to catch up with the small black ball of ooze, and she stomped her hoof down it at once. She was close enough. Then, without a single word of mercy or regret, Nightmare Moon's eyes flashed white once more. A final jolt of energy surged down her leg, and the ooze burned and hissed beneath her hoof. She winced at the sight of pain in her chest, but Nightmare Moon did not relent until the ooze was nothing but an ashy smear on the floor. And with that, Nightmare Moon took a single deep breath, held it in, and slowly let it slip out. She stood there for several long moments, taking in everything she had just done. And she was happy. Equestria, her friends, Twilight, they were all safe. She had destroyed the thing that had tried to hurt those she cared about. But what else had she just done? She had destroyed a piece of herself, the part that would have made everything else she had done, everything she had accomplished, have meaning and purpose. Now, truly, and forever, she was stuck between two lives. She could never be Nynx again, and she had just burnt away the part of herself that could have found happiness living the life of the true tyrant queen, Nightmare Moon. Still, the fleeting moment of happiness in her chest lingered. She had done something right. And even if Equestria as a whole hated her for the rest of eternity for what she had done, she had at least done this much right. And it wasn't going to be the last thing she did right either. At a larger home on the outskirts of Ponyville, a single filly sat on a swing in the front yard. The hinges of the swing creaked and squeaked. The filly wasn't really swinging. She was just rocking a few inches back and forth, driven more by the occasional gust of wind than by her own power. She sat with all four hooves on the swing. Her eyes were focused on the ground. Her dad always used to push her on the swing. He got busy sometimes, he had to work late, but he always made time to push her on the swing. The swing had been her favorite birthday present, even more than her tiara. It was the only thing that her dad had always been willing to do with her. He was always willing to give her a short push, even if he was just heading out to work or going someplace. That was before Nightmare Moon came back. In the past few weeks had been the worst of the filly's life. Almost every pony in town was mad at her. Some outright blamed her for everything that had happened. But the worst part was what had happened with her father. When Nightmare Moon came back, her father had left home to go and work and live in the castle. Her mother had said that he was working for the queen. They should be happy. Her mother had said that her father was now a powerful stallion in the government, and that's why he had to leave. He was important to Nightmare Moon, and that they should be happy. Yet Diamond Tiara wasn't happy at all. She continued to stare at the ground, not even caring that her tiara had fallen off, and was now sitting in the dirt underneath her swing. She didn't care about that stupid thing. Didn't care if Daddy was important or powerful. The only thing she wanted was to have him back. She'd make all the mean ponies stop teasing her. Ponies never made fun of her when he was around. That, and she missed him. Diamond Tiara sniffled, using a front leg to wipe her nose. She didn't cry, not because she wasn't sad. No, her tears were held back by anger. She wanted to make Nightmare Moon give her daddy back, but she was scared. It was stupid to think that was she was scared of Nyx, but, but Nightmare Moon was scary. Why did Nightmare Moon need him anyway? She had so many other ponies working for her. Why did she need to take her daddy? Damatiara grumbled, pouted, and did her best to keep herself from crying as she continued to think about her father. She'd been moping outside around the house and inside, but her mother had encouraged her to play on her swing. She'd gone outside and sat down on the swing set just to be left alone. Still, she didn't swing. What she wanted the most was to be pushed. She wanted to get a push from her daddy, or he didn't come home anymore. He didn't see her in town either. He was just gone, stolen away. And, if her father wasn't there to give her a swing, Diamond Tiara didn't want a swing at all. She just wanted to sit there and wait till her father finally came home to give her a push. Amidst the creaking and whining of the swing's hinges, Diamond Tiara heard another creak. The house was surrounded by a white picket fence and the sound she heard was the creaking of the front gate's hinges. Diamond Tiara first thought it was Silver Spoon. 
and she lifted her head to tell her friend she wasn't in the mood to play. Yet when she looked, she met a pair of azure eyes. She stared at those eyes for a long time, and they stared back. The pony who owned those eyes looked and took a tentative step forward, then broke out into a gallop. Diamond Tiara just as quickly jumped off the swing and ran to meet the other pony, leaping into his embrace. She hugged the stallion tightly around the neck, and he held her in her front hooves tightly. Diamond Tiara's mother poked her head out of the front door. Diamond Tiara, sweetie, it's time for din. She began, only to fall silent. She looked at the stallion her daughter was hugging, and her own eyes began tearing up. Rich? Rich, is that you? Filthy Rich looked up, smiling through the tears streaming down his face. In an instant, Diamond Tiara's mother was outside, joining the warm embrace the family was sharing. Daddy, does this mean you're not working for the Queen anymore? Diamond Tiara asked. Yes. Yes, it does. Rich said with a nod, not even bothering to wipe away the tears on his face. She released me. Released? But, honey, I thought... Not now, darling, Rich said, quickly sneaking a kiss from his wife. I... I promise that I'll explain later. So, I heard dinner is ready? Yes. Yes, it is. Good. Diamond Tiara and I will be right in. But first, I want to push my daughter on her swing. The mare nodded, and Diamond Tiara laughed as she quickly galloped over the swing. Mr. Witch followed soon behind her. Witch, soon, Demon Tiara was giggling and laughing, calling out to be pushed higher while her father smiled, tears of joy streaming down his face. All across Equestria, similar homecomings occurred. Stallions and mares who had once served Nightmare Moon were returning to their families and friends that they all abandoned. As each was greeted with a warm embrace and tear-filled eyes, those who had once served Equestria's queen spoke of how they had not been fired from their jobs, but released, given back the freedom that they never knew they had lost. Zakora nosed open the door to her hut, returning to her home after gathering herbs and roots she would need for her latest brew. She smiled as she stepped inside and sniffed the aroma that hung in the air. It smelled just as it needed to. She took in the scent a few moments longer and returned to look at her bubbling cauldron. Sitting beside it, Twilight Sparkle was using her magic to carefully stir the contents. In herbalism, Twilight, you have shown great potential. In a few days, your growth has been exponential, Zagora praised. Twilight smiled and looked up from her work. Thanks, but I'm just a quick study. That, and you have some really amazing books on herbs and their properties. In stewing roots and herbs, zebras are unmatched. And to our books, the same compliment can be attached. Still, I offer you thanks for your aid with my work. You could have easily just hung around my home like a lazy jerk. Twilight laughed a little and went back to stirring the cauldron. Well, I have never been good at sitting around, especially when I've got a lot on my mind. It helps to find something to distract myself with. Heavy thoughts rest on your soul, Zakora said knowingly as she began to unpack her ingredient ladle saddlebag. Undoubtedly about an unicorn who was once a fool. Philly, Twilight corrected. But yes, I'm thinking about Nyx. How could I not? The last time I saw her, she was going to confront Nexus about what he did to me. I know she's an unicorn, but it's been three days. What if something happened? To your concern, I can relate. You worry about Nightmare Moon and her fate. But you must understand, you are a wanted mayor and... Knock, knock. You must hide yourself with care, Zakora finished hurriedly as she glanced over her shoulder. Twilight nodded and slipped into Zakora's bedroom while the zebra moved to the front door. After giving Twilight a few more moments to hide and hearing the pony on the far side of the door knock once more, Zakora cracked open the door and looked to see who was outside. Hey there, Zakora. Her lewd smile formed on Zakora's lips. She opened the door as a particular orange farm pony walked inside with a baby dragon riding on her back. Applejack and Spike, it is good to see you. I hope you have not come seeking a healing brew. Nah, we ain't here for anything like that. Though I gotta say, them critters here in the Everfree Forest seem more riled up than usual. I swear I saw something that looked like a wolf on my way here. Not a timber wolf either, it was something bigger. A lupus is what you saw, I have no doubt. I too have noticed them lingering about. 
They claim a distant mountain as their home, but recently this land they have begun to roam. For days they have stirred the forest, put it with unease. In truth, there are far too many monsters among these trees. Applejack glanced outside as if to see if one more of those monsters were looking in on them through the hut's windows. Yeah, if there are so many monsters, maybe you should come stay in Ponyville for a spell. Just be safe. Your concern is touching, but you need not worry. If it becomes too much, I will leave this place in a hurry. Still, what brings you here, out into Everfree's wild frontier? Zakora asked before moving to the cauldron and resuming the stirring twilight had been abandoned. Don't bother barking up that tree, Zakora, Spike said as he jumped off Applejack's back. I've been trying to get her to tell me the whole way here. Well, I told you I was surprised, and now that we're actually here, I'll tell you, Applejack said before looking back at Zakora. We're here to see Twilight. Spike's eyes widened, and he quickly looked around. Twilight, having heard her name, stepped out from the hiding place in Zakora's bedroom. The second Spike saw Twilight, he tackled her and hugged her neck while laughing and crying at the same time. Twilight! Oh, Twilight, I've missed you so much! When I heard you were going to be executed, I... I... I've missed you too, Spike. Twilight said. She lifted a hoof to return Spike's hug. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was okay. I couldn't risk the Royal Guards finding me. Well, Sugar Cube, I reckon you don't have to worry about that anymore. Applejack responded. And by the way, it's good to see you're okay. Thanks, Applejack. It's good to see you too. Twilight replied. But why shouldn't I worry anymore? How did you two even find me? And what's going on in Ponyville? A whole lot of crazy, Applejack answered. A few days ago, Nightmare Moon called all the ponies she had working for her, every single one, to the castle, and she kept them there all until some time this morning. Then she came up to the manor up here. They were all worked up. But an hour later, and the castle gates opened, and all the ponies started to come out. But here's a strange thing, Applejack continued. All the ponies that went in had turquoise eyes, but when I saw them coming out, not one of them had that eye color. And they didn't? Applejack shook her head at Twilight's question. No, and I ain't the end of it either. After all them ponies left the castle, the mayor came back out. She rounded up all the ponies in Ponyville and read us a message from Nightmare Moon. It was all about how their crazy cult had disbanded and how she was sending all the ponies who worked for her back to her families. She... she sent them all home? Twilight asked in disbelief. Yeah, it was so crazy, Spike said as he finished hugging Twilight. I think I even saw Spell Nexus walking by the library along with some other ponies from Celestia's school from Gifted Unicorns. I never would have thought he had anything to do with this. No, trust me. He had something to do with it, all right. Twilight grumbled. Her memory of being attacked by Nexus, causing some small twinge of pain in her neck. Well, maybe not, Sugar Cube. From the way it sounded, none of them ponies work for Nightmare Moon were doing it on purpose. Supposedly, they were brainwashed. But when she found out Nightmare Moon unscrambled the brains, she freed all the ponies and let them choose whether or not they wanted to stay and work for her or go home. And from what I hear, they all chose to leave. This is very peculiar and strange. What has caused Nightmare Moon to change? Zakora asked. Applejack shrugged. I don't know, Sugar Cube. But that still ain't the strangest part. What could be stranger than what has been said? Zakora asked. Has Nightmare Moon grown a second head? No. I reckon that it wouldn't be as strange as what she's done. Nightmare Moon went and stepped down as the Queen of Equestria. She... she stepped down? I whispered in disbelief. I find all of this a little hard to swallow. I believe your words are quite hollow. It took a moment for Applejack to parse what Sakura had said before she furrowed her eyebrows. You calling me a liar? Zakora nodded firmly. Nightmare Moon relinquishing her crown and control. It goes against her plans and her greatest goal. Well, you don't believe me? Then why don't you take a gander at this? Applejack said. She reached into her saddlebags and, after a moment of digging, pulled out a scroll. Twilight took the scroll in her magic, unrolled it, and saw it was something of a royal proclamation. It was written more like a common letter. It did, however, have the royal seal. Zakora leaned in behind Twilight and read the message alongside her. 
to the citizens of Equestria. Today, I, Nightmare Moon, have disbanded the children of Nightmare, the cult of ponies who were responsible for my resurrection. They, along with all the other ponies, had joined the castle staff, in the past few weeks have been released from their service, and are allowed to return to their families, homes, friends, and lives. Please hold no ill will against these ponies. Their actions were not their own. All that they did was done under the influence of my magic. It tainted and corrupted these ponies. They, like all of Equestria, were victims and nothing more. If you must blame any pony, blame only me. Finally, I, Nightmare Moon, hereby step down as Queen of Equestria. All power and control of the government is hereby returned to the regents and officials appointed by Celestia and Luna, those who are entrusted to rule in the absence of the royal sisters. Should any pony need to speak with me, they may find me in my castle. Otherwise, I ask that you all simply pretend that I do not exist. Nightmare Moon I guess what you say is true. Forgive me for ever doubting you. Applejack smiled and gently punched his core in the shoulder. Ah, don't worry about it. I probably wouldn't have believed myself if I hadn't seen all them ponies leaving the castle unbrainwashed. It actually kind of makes sense, Buck remarked. Can you think of any pony that you would know who would want to work for Nightmare Moon willingly? I mean, back me up in this twi- Twilight, are you crying? Carla looked up from the message and quickly used a front hoof to rub away the tears that were starting to slide down her cheeks. Sorry, I'm just so happy. I'll admit, Sugar Cube, that there is some good news, Applejack said. But not exactly that good news. But don't you see what this means? Twilight asked with a wide grin on her face. I reckon I don't. What does it mean? She's not trying to be Nightmare Moon anymore, Twilight uh, said, rubbing her eyes again to try and keep back the tears. I think... I think my Nyx 